Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all well, because we're going to look at the biggest battlefield. So we need to be fit this morning to fight. <laughs> no, it will be just a bit of setting the scene today for this series of five. And today is just a bit the introduction to it. So it's about the biggest battlefield, a very vital, important topic. And you will see why as we go on. What do you think is the biggest battlefield? What do you think, if you hear about biggest battlefield, what comes to your mind straight away? Oh, not straight away. <laughs> yeah, mind. Yeah, that's right. Every human being is involved in it. Probably every day, multiple times. There are many different kinds of battles and every single one uses tools and weapons. But which battle is the biggest one? It's the mind. But we look at now a few battles just to get you to uh, think about two different things. The battle against the flu. Remember, you do have your own immune system, which when it sees a virus, usually <laughs> kills it. So while the virus does multiply fast, with any luck, your immune system will work just a little faster. So. Yes, viruses, all viruses want to spread, that's what they do, but most of the time we do keep them in check. Most of the time. So the virus attacks the body, and what is the weapon called to fight back? Immune system. Immune system. Then we've got the rooster battle. The two roosters fight each other. And what's the weapon they use? The beak. Then we have got the boxing battle. Mike Tyson fights his enemy. And what's his deadly weapon called? The fist. I don't want to be at his end there. Yes, and then we have got the survival battle. This is a python, snake against an alligator. And both are looking for food to survive, and who is going to be the meal? This is the question. Actually, it's a, a longer battle here. Who do you think won in the end? In fact, nobody did win. They both survived and they just deported each other. <laughs> but what are their weapons? Teeth and muscles. So the alligator uses his teeth and the python his body to choke. Now, we have different battles and there are many, many more battles on earth. The biggest battle ever began in heaven. Yes, you heard correctly, in heaven. And that was when one of the mightiest angels called Lucifer rebelled, rebelled against God. That war started a long time ago and it's still fully and very severely in operation. All these battles we have looked at uh, are significantly small compared to the war of good versus evil and God versus devil. And that big war is all about human beings. But it's not like on this picture where an angel is on one side and the, the devil on the other side trying to pull you physically to themselves. That battlefield would be physical one, but where is that biggest battlefield for you and me. The biggest battlefield is literally in our mind. This is where the battle starts. And I'm going to show you that the biggest uh, and most severe, severe wars take place in the mind. And once you realize this, you will be able to fight so much better. We will look at how effectively we can use the weapons God gave us in different battles we face. The first big battle of that nature took place at the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden. God said to Adam and Eve, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Straight after that, the devil came. And how did he fight? He said, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He tried to make God to appear to be a liar. 
So the first stage of the temptation was doubt. The devil suggests God is a liar. Listen what Eve answered him. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So she knew, they knew exactly what God said. They could quote it. Their memory must have been really good. <laughs> At this moment, Eve is still agreeing with God and therefore completely safe. But then the devil goes further than only suggesting that God is a liar and said, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, that was a plain lie. With this, the devil didn't only suggest anymore that God is a liar, but he told Eve that God is a liar. We will find out that every single battle you and I face is based on that strategy. Doubt and lie. First the devil wants to make you doubt and then he lies to you. In that moment when Eve ate the fruit, the process of death started in her body. From that instant on, she was subject to age and finally died. And that's exactly the reason why I am losing my hair. And of course, the relationship with God broke. They did die spiritually and with immediate effect, they were sent out of the Garden of Eden. God did not lie. What the devil says may look so real, but it's an optical illusion. I'm going to show you a few paintings on the street which are optical illusions, but they look so real. They are actually quite amazing. Here's one. The only one who is real is the person. Then look at that. This must have been a very, very, very long day or days, weeks, <laughs> I don't know. Here, the painter spent five days working 12 hours a day to create the 250 square meters image of the crevasse. He then persuaded passers-by to complete the illusion by pretending the gaping hole was real. So you can see here the people, they are the only ones who are real. Amazing work, really. This picture appeared on the East Pier in Don Lagoya, Ireland, as part of the town's festival of the world cultures. And it's a good posing one. <laughs> Your mind can easily trick you. And the devil is master in playing with your mind. And we will be looking at how he does it on the next Sunday. Now watch this. <laughs> Poor chap. <laughs> but it's tricking the mind. You see, the enemy is master in tricking the mind. You see, the, the devil didn't come with the fork to Adam and Eve, it would have been far too obvious. He never could have tricked Adam and Eve with a fork. He uses much better weapons than the fork. His weapons are much more sophisticated than the fork. What we have only the, the picture we have or so many times is painted to us when we are children, the devil with the fork. And he has not changed. Today, in 2024, the enemy still uses the same weapons as in the last few thousand years because they work very effectively and very, very good. And he had a lot of practice so far as well. We will be looking at how he does it and how we can apply fighting against it. The devil's intention hasn't changed for human beings since Adam and Eve. And he has only one aim in mind for you and me. And this is to kill you and to separate you from God forever. You need to keep that in mind. This is his mission here on earth. And he will not stop until he is removed. And then he rejoices that he has destroyed another life for all eternity. This is 
unimaginable for our minds to take in. It is here about eternity. What he is doing will affect many people for eternity. He is utterly wicked and a very dirty fighter. And we need to have this so real in front of our eyes. What we are doing here in this world is a battle. It's not just go to work, sleep and eat. It's not about that. It is so much more. He always tries to draw your attention to the here and now. Like with Adam and Eve, he basically told them that they can have great fun now being like God. It wasn't only a lie, but he made them blind for the future consequences. He does the same with you today and me. He wants to. It's like he shows you the beauty of the present, but covers the consequences with the fog. And that's the way he operates. And he's always operated like that. And he keeps going like that, because this is how he can successfully take over many lives. I think by now you can see that the biggest battlefield is the mind. I intentionally highlight the enemy side, otherwise we wouldn't know that we fight an enemy. It's like it's no good to just talk about salvation, because then you would wonder, what do I need to get saved from? However, if you point out first the need, then salvation becomes so much more relevant and important to people. It will, of course, get much more clear when we will go on, and also how that battlefield may look like in you and my life on a daily basis. You will be surprised how much easier it is to fight when you can see the battlefield with the enemy in it. And even more, when you actually see his actual weapons. Well, next Sunday, we are going to analyze the battle a bit closer. And I'm going to give you homework, which we are going to do right now in the next one or two minutes together. I want you to close your eyes and just think which battles do I face from time to time, or sometimes, or every day, what are these battles? And how do I feel when I think of these battles? Do I feel there's no point to fight? Do I feel maybe one day I will be able to overcome and fight and win? Or how do you feel? What are these battles? Can you see the weapons the enemy is using in your battles against you? Let's just have now a, a minute quiet where you can pray to God and just ask him that he may really prepare your heart now over the next few weeks for these battles. That all this can be personalized and that you say, I want to get ready in my mind, I want to get ready in my heart I want to prepare. I am not the meal. This is going to change. And I want to look up now to God and I pray now that you, Holy Spirit, will help me to come with a prepared heart next Sunday that I can receive the word of God in a way that it will go into my system and I will be able to apply it to my own life.